right. The pub is open. It's episode 55. How exciting is that? That's my age. Mwah. Oh my gosh. So many things, termites. So many things. What are we drinking? Well, I'm drinking a beer, just a regular Bud Light in my White Castle fancy pint glass. Um, One of the termites asked, what's your favorite light beer? What's my favorite light beer? Uh, Mick Ultra. Yeah. That's not really light, though. If I had to go light, I'd go Bud Light, then I'd go Miller Light. I can't do Coors Light. My one brother in law really loves it. And uh, I don't know. I think you have to be raised on it. It has a weird taste to me. Raised in the rock. I mean, if I was, you know, in a desert and somebody offered me a six pack, <laughs> I'm taking it. But, and I would be very appreciative and I would probably really have a different view on that. But that's just what we're drinking, a boring beer. But because I have this, it's called Day Drinking Watermelon Rosé Wine Spritzer in a can made by who? Little Big Town, the band. Nice. Yeah, I like them. I like the way their voices um, blend together. And they can all sing really good on their own, too. Yeah. They're kind of like a country Fleetwood Mac, if you will. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So let's see. Like, I don't know that I'm going to love this, but I do love the can. It's kind of the <laughs> Lily Pulitzer coloring. I like the can. Yeah, um, can, lady. You love watermelon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll let it chill. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Fine. I don't they have other flavors. I'm going to have to look for other flavors. It says day drinking from sun up to sundown. They have a song called day drinking, which is on my pre-show music. Well, if you ever come to a show and you're sitting there thinking, I wonder who chose this music. I did and Paddles did. Boom! That's who did. That's why there's quite a differentiation <laughs> yeah. in a, a lot of the songs. Alone. What are we doing? What have I got from you, termites? This is so fun. This is so cool. This is termite Andy, or Adam. Close. Greenville, South Carolina. It's my favorite flag out of any state yeah. in the whole. It's so simple. It's just a palm tree and a, and a quarter moon. Mm -hmm. The license plate, it's on, I, and it's one of my favorite places to go. Charleston or in Kiowa. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love, love, love. And so I have, look, I have a little rocks glass now for my JMO. Nice. How fancy is that? Nice. So thank you, Adam. It's a wonderful term, my present. I actually really like that. And I'm going to have to order like three more so that I have a, don't buy more, but I'll buy them. And then look at this term. I sent this. This is like the Henry VIII Crown Royal bag. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to send oh, this to Carrot wow. Top. Yeah. It's really oh. fancy and it's humongous, but I don't know. Maybe I'll put something and then inside of it. There's a tiny little angel. Nice. Oh, because oh. you know why? Especially if my brother's listening. I'm an angel, Pam. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's on the front? I like it. <clears throat> What's on the front? It says Crown Royal. Yeah, but turn around. Oh, wow. Yeah. Special edition. And then a couple um, little coin things. Cool. So that was from, um, I don't say people's last names. Some people don't care, though. That was from Debbie. So thank you, Debbie H. Um, <clears throat> I like that. And then these people made me laugh because they <laughs> said, you can see, we're fine if you use my name. No one can find us. We live in the middle of nowhere, twice removed. <laughs> Wendy. And so I'll have to tell Wendy that I got this. Um, but they sent me uh, uh, go a golf ball, again, <laughs> random, well, hat from this country club. Now I'm gonna have to Google where this is, Discovery Bay. And then I looked at the thing. I have a scorecard, too. It looks pretty. Uh, Discovery Bay, California. I don't know where that is. But I also got two golf balls that are from there. And these ain't cheap in the pro shop, people. No. These are three bucks a piece. I know that. So thank you. I'm going to go look up where that is. I didn't have time to do that before I started this little show today. There's, um, a, there's a yacht club, too. It's by Stockton. By Stockton? Mm -hmm. So it's inland. Okay, I don't know why they have a yacht. Maybe there's a lake. It's a bay. Discovery Bay. True. Come on, Paddles. Use your mind. <sighs> that's right. I said it. So that's just some termite stuff that's come in that was fun and silly. And um, what are we going to eat today? What are we doing for the work of the Lord? You know what? I saw the Cheetos ice cream in real life. I couldn't pull the trigger. I know. It looks awful. Well, and then they did flaming Hot. How about just, let's ease into this. Yeah. Regular Cheeto ice cream. Yeah, right. I'd have tried that. The Flaming Hot, no. But in doing, somebody actually 
requested this on Twitter after I'd already bought it. No way. Yeah. Great. He's like, since you're doing the work of the Lord, could you taste the Lay's Funyuns? And I said, oh, funny enough, it's coming up this week. <laughs> yeah, I will taste the Lay's. But see, this, the reason I love Lay's is because they're not rippled. And oh, the, come on. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm very serious. Um, that doesn't taste like a Funyun to me. No? No. Does it taste like a sour cream onion chip? No. Mm. I'd say pass. Pass! Well, sorry. Oh. Not everything could be a winner. Not in this household. Oh, Not everything's yes. a winner. And I love Lay's, but I like them because they're flat. Flat. Okay, what else am I going to try? Kettle brand crinkle crut habanero lime. I don't want these chips you really need. I know it's loud. Simmer down over there, pedals. For Christ's sake. What? They're good. <laughs> I, I, I vote yes on the wow, kettle brand crinkle. Well, I like the crinkle cut on these kind of chips because they're harder chips and they're thicker. It's really hot though. Holy shit. Okay. Have some watermelon rosé. <laughs> well, that'll make you not eat a whole bag. I guarantee you that. That's for sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm going to let that chill. And then um, a termite brought this to a show, and now I don't remember which show. I'm thinking Atlantic City. It's Hannaford Ranch. Maybe Vegas. I've never seen it. It's from Maine. Um, Scarborough, Maine. Yes. Yeah, it was Vegas. Was it Vegas? Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you, Termite, whoever. I don't know if you can, let's see if I even like it. It says, fabulous on everything from sandwiches and dips. F on everything, sandwiches, fabulous on everything, sandwiches and dips. All right. It looks like classic ranch. Ranch. Yeah. It's ranch. Okay. Um, I agree with their... Listing. <laughs> it's it's classic ranch. It just tastes like <laughs> butter and milk and all kinds of bad things in a great way. You should start a ranch. It's called It's Ranch. It's Ranch. Yeah. Well, because that's good. I like it. Okay. More is a dip. A little yeah. thick as a salad dressing. Okay. I mean, you really have to whip it around. Uh -huh. Like a blue cheese. Like you see in the sh TV shows. Have you ever seen <laughs> termites? Have you ever seen Trisha Yearwood's cooking show? I don't even like to cook. I want nothing to do with cooking. <laughs> but there's something about her show. Because Trisha, she's not super skinny, which I like on a cooking show. She's I don't. Average. Yeah, average. Um, pretty. I think she sings better than Garth, but I'm sure that's never being able to be said out loud in that household. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Um, but I like watching it because I think, really? People are just okay with that? I've never thought about putting chicken pot pie on my cheeseburger but wow. it looked fucking great delicious yeah but i'm like it's like trisha picked up where paula dean left off mm -hmm. i'm gonna take something fattening yep. and i'm gonna make it more fattening and southern nice. and then i'm gonna fry it and then if you've never heard my friend vic henley who passed away the comedian you should go online maybe we'll put it in the show notes his his joke about paula dean it was one of the funniest and i was proud to say that i added the line and just wring the paper towel Squeeze your paper top. Squeeze your paper top. But it's all about Paula Dean and, like and he, how she took the money from the diabetes pill company and then just went, fuck you. I'm still eating butter. All the butter. <laughs> he was, he, that joke was so good. And then he, then he would go, I don't know. I can't do that. That's getting too old. No, it ain't. She just opened more restaurants. Paula has not gone away. There's a, there's new ones everywhere. Paula's on the, on the rampage, maybe not everywhere, but in the South, nobody canceled Paula. Mm -hmm. No. People talk about cancel culture. It didn't happen to Paula. Okay, what do we got going on today, Tarmit? See, I, well, shout out to the Tulsa Drillers who gave me that Noodler's, um, I love a bucket hat mm -hmm. for the lake. And uh, they sent one for Ron for golf, one for me, one for me, one for Ron, and one for paddles. They, yeah, they were thoughtful. Um, and, uh, but I had it on, but then I couldn't put my headphones on. But anyway, that's why my hair doesn't look very nice. <laughs> also, because I didn't do anything except put it in a ponytail, and I've been sweating all morning. Ken is probably a noodler. Because I've been cutting trees. 
I'd say Tanya'd be up for noodling. She'd at least go with you. Yeah. The rest of these ladies, I don't really see it. I don't think no. Sure no. That's why I still have an affinity towards Tanya. She'll get down a dirty hillbilly. No problem. I don't know that she'd do it. Dolly might. Yeah, Dolly'd Dolly probably might. go. Yeah. Yeah. She'd at least go along if you had a nice pontoon, I think. Do we have any news about the queens? Yes, we do. It's all Stevie this week. Mm -hmm. So Stevie was on a podcast. Um, they were asking her about, does she want to write her memoir? Uh, it was Tim McGraw. He has a podcast. Tim McGraw always looks like he has that weightlifter oil on. What is going on? Is like like Faith Hill's so good looking that you feel the need to oil well, up like with a with a tanning element in it too. That. Unless he's just that tan. Like, are you out all the time? I he's cute enough. I don't know what. He's adorable. But I guess if you're with Faith Hill every day, I just feel like an ugly sack of shit. So you got to do something. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll just put oil all over me. That'll help. Not when you're this white, Super it won't. Cute. All it does is make it reflect in things. <laughs> anyway, Tim McGraw, he has a. Um, this is why if you're if you want to talk to Stevie, now's the time because Stevie loves to work and talk, mm -hmm. and now she's got nothing to do since she canceled her deal. So boom, Tim McGraw's people got in on why it. Why don't yep. you have her on your podcast? It's uh no, I don't have these people on my podcast. There's no queens on this podcast. <laughs> no, <clears throat> no, um. No, and I, I don't have the power. I don't, I wouldn't want to talk to any of them, really. Cher, probably. Well, Cher and Dolly. But Stevie, she's weird. Tanya. I, I love her, but I, I don't I want to keep it that way. Um, Tanya's fine, yeah. yeah. Shaka, she's weird, but in a good way. Yeah. But I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say to Tanya. She's still on hip reserve, too. Yeah. She's on, she's, she's on, <laughs> she in, she's on injured reserve. <laughs> her hip, down a hip. Um, so she was on Tim McGraw's Beyond the Influence Radio, whatever. Um, she was talking about a potential biop, uh, biopic or book. She said, if I could get it into a book, it would be like Twilight. It would be like four books. And then if I thought that was great, then I might say, well, maybe we could do a four part thing. I, I used to say, absolutely no, not writing a book, not making a movie. Don't ask me and don't ask me to make a musical. I hate them. Hate them, hate them. Oh, wow. I do too. Uh, this is uh, this is what I could talk to Stevie about. She said, except for Wicked. Wicked is my favorite. Everybody gets one exception. Mine is The Sound of Music. Why? Because it's historically accurate, uh, accurate, and it involves war and Nazis and terrifying things. So does Feather on the Roof. <clears throat> and it was all true. Feather on the Roof. All historically accurate. Is it? Well, I don't know. You, paddles, you can't make shit up like that about. <laughs> Classics? You don't know that. Neither do I. I don't know a goddamn thing. I, I think I don't know anything Wicked about it. Would be but I agree with Stevie. And if you say you hate musicals, people get so psycho. Yeah. You know, oh my God, what about this? What about this? Here's the other thing. By the time stuff got to St. Louis, like the star went from whoever it was in New York to, hey, it's amazing, Jonathan in the dream coat starring Donny Osmond <laughs> live at the Muni. <laughs> Who's calling me? It's my brother. No, Patrick. No. I called him earlier. That's my fault. Um, yeah, we never got the first run in St. Louis. I mean, it was fine, but, you know, we didn't get. But sometimes you got off, beaten, off the beaten past. Uh, <clears throat> Stevie said, I don't have a problem sharing what's happened to me in my life because most everything that's happened to me, I think, has been pretty marvelous. Somebody spelled marvelous wrong. I would be careful with some things because I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I made, and lots of them were my, weren't my fault. So I would tell them in a way where people got the message, but it wasn't gothic and super sad. You know what I mean? Oh, man. No, I don't know what you mean. No. But I have more on this. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stevie Nicks on overcoming drug addiction. I saved me. Nobody else saved me. That's my Stevie voice. Huh. She said what I wouldn't put in it. I would go very gracefully o over the drugs because I don't feel they define my life. She continued... I managed to save myself on beating her cocaine addiction in her early 40s doing a stint at the Betty Ford Center. I got through some pretty scary moments, but I saved me. Nobody else saved me. I survived. I survived cocaine. I survived it myself. Well, you got to give credit there. That's a hard one to kick. Nix made it clear she was the driving force for getting herself 
treatment, I checked myself into rehab. Nobody did that for me. I did it. And that's like with my whole life. So I would just dance over those parts just to give wisdom out to people. But mostly I would just tell all these really fun, funny stories because I would love to share those things. Um, she also, then she said about Fleetwood Mac, all of us were drug addicts, but there was a point where I was the worst addict. That's got to suck. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, it's a bad yeah, I know a lot of drinkers, drunks, just call them what they are, but you always hope, that's why you do an Irish goodbye, then you're yeah. never the worst, because they don't even remember when you left. That's what I told Lewis about Afghanistan. This is the worst Irish goodbye ever. <laughs> Hashtag didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, Stevie sounds I know Stevie's, I know I have to slow down if I'm going to do Stevie, because when she talks, it can very easily slip into my alien. Yes. Yes, I know. She said all of us were drug addicts, there was a point where I was the worst drug addict. I was a girl, I was fragile, and I was doing a lot of coke. And I had a hole in my nose. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Referring to a self-medication misstep she, when she treated migraines with a solution of aspirin and water that she squirted up her nose. Oh. It was all real dangerous. What were you thinking? That really didn't help our irritability level, she said of the drug excesses. If you're not happy with someone, then just go do some coke and see much, how much more unhappy you can be with them. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. This is why my friend Kevin said bouncing for them when he was in vet school. He's like, they, they were the worst, baby. I know she's your idol, but he hated it. They were always fighting and sleeping with each other. And I've already talked about that. Anyway. But you think this crap is helping you, so you do it because you think you're getting better and you think you're like, you know, immortal, like you're going to live forever when you're doing coke in the beginning. You're going to have a lot of problems with your nose if you don't stop doing this, a doctor told her. So she did that. And then, um, so now she only smokes a little bit of pot. And she said it's all under control. Don't worry about anything. Stevie's got it. So good for you. Great. As a comedian, Rocky Laporte would say, go for you, Stevie. Go for you for... Not ruining your whole nose, because you can't fix that stuff. I actually know somebody whose nose fell apart due to um, coke. That middle part, and then it just looks like they were punched square in the face. Yeah, it's somebody that I used to work with at a restaurant. And then the problem is you've spent all your money on coke, and now you don't have enough money to fix your nose. And even if you want to fix your nose, sometimes it's impossible. Wow. Yep. That's it in the Queen news. That's all I got. Update! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Liberty University being sued by 12 women claiming school policies made sexual assault and rape more likely. So maybe if these women win this lawsuit, mm -hmm. then Liberty can win their one over Jerry Falwell and they'll, everyone will be even. Okay, team. Except Jerry. Yeah. Listen to this shit, though. Liberty University had been sued by 12 women who claimed the school created an environment on its Virginia campus that increased the likelihood of sexual assault and rape. Lawsuit includes claims of sexual assault and accuses the Lynchburg School of creating a hostile environment toward the plaintiffs. Well, I, I would think if I'm going to Bible land here mm -hmm. and I'm a chick. Yeah. Mm, the university also p promoted attacks on and demonstrated D discrimination against women through a series of policies that discourage sex before marriage and punish those who reported misconduct. Oh, man. Wow. The plaintiffs who were not lame include women who were students or employees and, and one non-student who was a minor at the time. They're referred to as Jane Doe, one through 12, 12 of them. Uh, first, the lawsuit alleges wow. that the quote, this is how the school created the environment in three ways. They, they have the Liberty Way, which is the school's honor code. It makes it difficult to report sexual violence because it doesn't clearly shield students making the reports from punishments for infractions. So you can't tell anybody. Well, that's not cool. Right, so you want to be, if, you, if you're really mean, you want to be the one committing it. Right, yeah. Right. I mean, come on. Because you know that the victim can't report it. Right. Or they're going to get in trouble. Including being at a place where alcohol is served or being alone with a member of the opposite sex. That's included in the Liberty Way. Wait. Second, there's a tactic that condones sexual violence, particularly by male student athletes, by weighing a denial more heavily than an allegation, the lawsuit claims. That's what the lawsuit says. Third, the plaintiffs in the lawsuit said that the school engages in public and repeated retaliation against the women who've reported sexual violence. They've created a blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, university says, you know, that's not really our policies, but it's actually in the manual. Right. So I don't know how you're going to, I guess you're going to have to get a lot of white out, Mercy. which is not cheap. Nope. Um, students who are, they, they tried to report stuff and they just treat them like shit or, um, one student had photos of bruising she suffered suffered during her attack in her report, which she later discovered had been removed from her Title IX investigative file for being too explicit. Oh, my God. Yeah, they even took wow. the pictures out. Wow. Um, a second plaintiff, who was a student in 2014, <laughs> said she was raped by her boyfriend, also a student she met through two of her roommates. The roommates reported that the plaintiff reported the plaintiff to the student conduct office. Oh, wow. So the guy roommates, you know. Um, although the plaintiff attempted to make it clear she was a victim of rape, Liberty's University Student Con Conduct Office gave her no opportunity to do so instead, and instead forced her to sit with her rapist and apologize to her roommate, to her roommates for her violation of the Liberty Way. Oh my God. I don't, it goes on and on. I don't know how you, if you have a girl, how can you send, well, I don't know. I'm Catholic, I'm not a Bible person. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I have to go to a wedding this weekend, so I'll get my bit of the Bible at the wedding. Catholic <laughs> wedding. Should be about eight and a half hours. It'll be great. Super Hopefully the church has air conditioning. I haven't even asked. I should have asked. Anyway, update! Excuse me while I did crack on that. That Hannaford branch is really good. I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> update! Okay. My dad, uh -huh. for the record, is not on Team Free Britney. What? Nope. Come on, Jack. Lawyer, lawyer judge man Jack says the problem is to get a conservatorship, at least in the state of Missouri, I don't know about California, and things in California sometimes are very, very different. But for the most part, to get a conservatorship over someone, you really do have to provide to a judge, not just one judge. There's like panels of people and it's not an easy thing to do. Then I think Lou, Lewis, Lewis told me or, or Patrick told me, Allen Iverson had one, the basketball player. What? Yeah, because he was going crazy and spending all of his money and shit and like out of control. Anyway, <laughs> the problem is those things are sealed. Ah. So we don't know what Brittany is yeah. or re isn't really doing. Now I'm still on Team. Instagram. The only reason, the biggest reason I'm on Team Britney is I actually have friends in my phone crazier than Britney, and they're running <laughs> loose. They are running loose in Colorado. You know who you are. Um, I mean, I've got Texas. Uh, Texas. I think we know what's Georgia. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot going on in Georgia. Yep. <laughs> One from Utah. Mm? <laughs> and they're still my friends. Um, but I think they'd be better if somebody had some sort of control yeah. over them. <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears' dog was close to death in her care, as fathers say, as father says, her problems are far worse than known. Now I'm still for free and Britney, but we don't know no. what has been submitted. And then the judges that all approve this—they're not fucking around, no. like. You know, you can't just come and say, I think my, I think my sister's crazy. And then she won't get off Instagram. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brittany ain't. There's a more topless photos. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Stop. The makeup. You do that after you're free. Yes. Not post pre-freedom. <laughs> freedom. There's a new, maybe a new twist in the free Brittany narrative stemming from reports that one of her dogs. I saw a picture of one of them on uh, Instagram. I don't know what they are. They're small. But I don't, it's not a Yorkie. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody, maybe a termite knows. I don't even care. I don't even, I can't, uh, the only, like I say, I know one song this lady sings. Oh, I did it again. I don't even know why I'm interested, but now I'm in. So I got to go to the end. Um, one of her dogs fell gravely ill due to neglect. Then she had a violent, that she had a violent confrontation with her housekeeper and her father's new claims in court documents that her addiction and mental health problems were far worse than the public realized. Spears' dog will return to her Friday after being taken away from her two weeks earlier. But then I wonder, if you keep doing these kinds of things to a person, they might fucking go crazy. They're Maltese. Maltese? Yeah. Is that what they are? Yeah, a housekeeper took them. Oh. Spears reportedly believes her father, as his conservator, had a hand in the dogs being removed from her home. 
TMZ and Page Six have said. TMZ, by the way, if you want to see the funniest picture ever, I don't usually know people on TMZ. <laughs> but one, one night in Savannah, people were banging on Ron's bus really hard. It was just parked on a street mm -hmm. and like going crazy. And he was sleeping and he got mad and he got up <laughs> and in his boxer shorts, with his hair, which he has great hair, but when it's unruly, I mean, and he looks like Nick Nolte. He came out of the bus with a nine iron, and there's a picture, you can Google on TMZ, Ron White, or we'll put it in the show notes, and the picture comes up. It is the funniest. It's fantastic. I've never seen him move that fast at night, or in the morning, or any time when he's sleeping. He must have, he, was, he said, he goes, I'd had it. I told him to go away. I'd already taken pictures of people. Anyway, see, that's my thought on TMZ. Brittany is demanding answers. She's been through this before. Her conservators used to threaten to take her children away. It's all too familiar and heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking feeling for her. Jamie Spears has hit back at his daughter's allegations uh, that her conservatorship has been abusive or akin to sex trafficking. Whoa. Oh. Wow. In new court documents reported by The Sun, Jamie Spears said that highly confidential information about his daughter's mental state shows that she is far worse than the public realizes. All I'm saying is that is possible. And I do agree with Jackalope Madigan on that. Mm -hmm. But I still, I don't know. I say let her run rampant for a year or two. <laughs> I mean, let her go. Let her give it a try, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, Jamie Spears refers to his daughter's darkest moments in a 15-page respon 15 response to her petition to have him suspended. 69-year-old became her conservator after she su suffered a mental health breakdown in 2008. He's been in charge of her finances, career, and health care. 2008 was a long time ago, though, mm -hmm. and young people do stupid shit. Yeah. So she went and shaved her head. I, yeah. I remember that day. I was actually in L.A. and saw it on TV. It was breaking news. That's sad, though. It is sad. That was sad. But I don't know. I know kids that have shaved their head for fun. Yeah, but she didn't do it for fun. I don't know why she did it. She probably doesn't know She's either. Fun, you don't yeah. know, Paddles. No I knows. know. Maybe her dogs know. I bet she, she told her too. dogs. She told her dogs. Do you know why I shaved my head? Oh, no. I know. Mm -hmm. um, he said in the 13 years he's been on duty here that he saved his daughter from disaster. If the public knew all the facts of Mrs. Spears' personal life, not only her highs and her lows, but all the addiction and mental health issues that she'd struggled with. Well, the addiction, yeah, but you, what are you giving her? Because I would take stuff, I guess, if my dad gave it to me, I could become an addict overnight. I love stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know if till you know if you're I already have an addictive personality. You don't know until you know. You don't know until you know. No. <laughs> Say I said seven thousand Marlboro <laughs> lights later. Um. Um. So he says he doesn't want to. He will step down, but only when the time is right. That's vague. He said in another court filing, the transition needs to be orderly and include a resolution of matters pending before the court. In a new Low and Spears live may center around the dogs. Um, it's not clear if he had anything to do with the dogs being removed. It's so fucked up. The housekeeper took both dogs to an emergency vet who expressed alarm at their conditions. Um, at that point, it was decided that Spears' dog sitter should take custody of them. When she confronted the housekeeper last week about the dogs, things got heated. TMZ said Spears was upset that the housekeeper had taken photos of the dog with her phone, possibly to do document oh, their alleged neglect and to send, ja to send to Jamie Spears. A scuffle broke out over the phone broke out with Spears sources saying she merely hit the phone, but the housekeeper told the police, she called the cops that she struck her arm, causing her to lose the grip on the phone. Oh. Uh, okay, well, I ain't calling the cops over that. No. God. Mm. So, that's our update. I don't know, I don't know, termites. I think most of the people, most of the termites on board with this show probably are just distant observers as I am. You know, not really highly invested. No. I am in the story, but not in Brittany. Um, oh. Well, I don't know the lady. I know, but... I do want her to be able to run amok for a few years and see what happens. Yeah. See if she can handle it. Yeah. Why not? What, is she 39 years old or some crap? I mean, <laughs> if the people I mentioned in my phone are making it, I think Brittany could do. Yeah. This is just a public service announcement. It's not really an update. It is an update. Okay. Update! Just so people know, TSA extended uh, the mask rule into January. I think people should know that if they're flying. Yeah. Okay? And I'd go get the N95 one because I've been running around with 
dumb ones. I love the St. Louis Blues. Like, <laughs> fucking, I have so many masks that I'm sure aren't really probably doing anything. But it seemed like they were fine, the cloth ones, for a while. I'm a Libra. Right. You know, I mean, I'll wear anything. <laughs> I want to get on the. I want to get on the flight and have a mask on that says, "Do you? Can I have a vodka cranberry?" <laughs> and to see how many people would just get me a vodka cranberry. Walk into the Delta Lounge and then walk up to the bar. Put it over your N95 mask. Yeah, o- over it, over it. Oh my God! That I didn't have many updates this week, but I have a lot of news, a lot of great news. Now. I'm telling you people, uh-huh. it's a good goddamn thing we live in America. Wow. Because if you're living in the United Kingdom, your McDonald's have run out of milkshakes. <gasps> no. And that used to be my favorite thing at McDonald's, the chocolate milkshake. I wow. love their chocolate milkshake. McDonald's has been forced to stop selling milkshakes and bottled drinks at nearly 1,300 restaurants in the United Kingdom as Brexit-related staff shortages I, they, you shouldn't have Brexited. Nope. You're gonna, you're gonna regret, regret your Brexit. Um, and supply chains caused delays to the pandem- by the pandemic continue to slam companies. Like most re- re- retailers, we are currently experiencing some supply chain issues impacting the availability of a small number of products. Bottled drinks, that's not a small number, no. bottled drinks. And milkshakes are temporary, temporarily unavailable in restaurants across England, <laughs> Scotland, and Wales. Wow. What about Northern Ireland? That's part of the UK. Come on, people, get your stories with all the facts. Maybe they have drivers over there, I don't know. A spokesman for the fast food giant said, um, here's another reason why. A shortage of truck drivers that has contributed to the supply disruption in Britain. The Road Haulage Association said the United Kingdom is short around 100,000 truck drivers, 20,000 of them who are EU nationals that left the country after Brexit. There's also a shortage of worker in other parts of the food supply chain. I'm surprised they're not blaming it on the American unemployment. (laughs) All you lazy people sitting at home. And you know what? This is what's crazy about Brexit. Like when Lewis and I were in, um, we went for his uh, big birthday. I won't say which one. He wanted to go to Scotland and he wanted to go to Loch Ness. Well, I wanted to go to Loch Ness. Um, but we were like in this bar and this girl was from like Poland. And she, cause we were like, why did you move here? Inverness is the top of Scotland. Yeah. Like the weather is not, I'm not saying it's a field day in Poland, but, and she said, um, well, cause I married my, uh, our, my girlfriend is here and I want to be with my girlfriend. But then I thought now when Brexit, cause of the EU, she could do that. Right. Cause Poland was part of the EU. But when they Brexited, does that mean that girl's got to go home? Uh, I think so. Wow, Unless she marries the other girl. The other girl. Her girlfriend. Right. I don't know. I don't think they thought all this through. A right. shitload of your workforce, you're evacuating. Right. It's a little serious for the pubcast, yes. but I know. I'm just saying, if you happen to be going to the UK, don't get your heart set on a, on a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> That's why you're going. You gotta really check yourself. <laughs> Yeah, but Americans would do that. Yeah. You know they would. Um, okay, this is crazy. The Nirvana baby on the album. Um, yeah. The album Nevermind. Mm-hmm. His name was Spencer Eldon. He's suing the band for child sexual exploitation, saying he was unable to consent to having his image used for the iconic 1991 album. What? I know. Sure, we should talk to his parents. Well, I'm gonna tell you how it happened. Okay. Um, here's what they should do. I don't know what they did pay. They don't say did they pay the baby back then? <laughs> did they pay the baby's parents? I'm sure they had to. Meh, doesn't sound like it. Huh. So I'm saying give Spencer who's got Nirvana's money. Courtney Love. Courtney Love. <laughs> well, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, and Spencer. Dave, Dave Grohl. I'm th- yeah, Dave Grohl's probably got it. Give the guy 25 grand, call it even. Somebody Just gives. a round number for your nude baby picture. <laughs> if somebody, if I had a nude baby picture and somebody offered me 25 grand, yes! <laughs> Fuck, I'd do it for 7,500. Go <laughs> Five. We'll call Jack. Five. There's no pictures of any of us older kids before age like 10. 
and they're <laughs> shitty Polaroids at that. No, I was actually, for Comedy Central or something, they're like, do you have any pictures, like when you're four or five? I'm like, I'll call headquarters, but <laughs> nah, I'm thinking those boxes got lost in a move. If they were even taken. God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, he claims... Spencer claims that the ban violated federal child pornography statutes and argues child exploitation. Um, in a lawsuit that named the photographer Kirk Weddle and the labels behind the album's release, Eldon claims he has suffered lifelong damages. Oh, come on. Mm. Yeah. Nobody knows it's you. And nobody bought the There's album. a picture of the adult Spencer. Right. I, I mean, yeah. if, I, if I saw him at a bar, I wouldn't go, holy shit, that's a baby from Nirvana's album. <laughs> How would I know that? <laughs> and nobody bought the album because of you. <laughs> it's just a white baby. I didn't like that the baby was underwater and I didn't see. I did remember being disturbed by the album cover because the baby was too little to really know how to swim and there didn't seem to be an adult underwater with it. You think too much. No. So you just got to turn up smell like tea spirit. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> okay. He says his legal guardians never signed a release. Well, that's a problem. Authorizing the use of any images of Spencer or his likeness, and certainly not of commercial child pornography depicting him. He's also suing for distribution of private sexually explicit materials, negligence, and what's described as sex trafficking venture. He was forced to engage in commercial sex acts while under the age of 18. What? What? I don't know. Just reading. He's seeking damages, attorney fees, and an injunction to prohibit all parties from continuing to engage in the unlawful acts and practices described herein. And, it, and he wants a trial by jury. The permanent harm, here's what he says he suffered, it includes, but is not limited to, extreme and permanent emotional distress with physical manifestations, interference with his normal development and educational progress, lifelong loss of income and earning capacity. What? Come on. Loss of future wages, past wages, future expenses for medical and psychological treatment, loss of life and loss of other, uh, and other losses to be described and proven at the trial of this matter. Here's how it happened. Weddle was a friend of Spencer's father, Rick, which is how young Spencer ended up on the album cover. Weddle calls up and was like, hey, Rick, want to make 200 bucks and throw your kid in the drink? Rick drink. told NPR, I had the drink, it sounds yeah. like my dad. In 2008, I was like, what's up? And he's like, well, I'm shooting kids all week. Why don't you meet me at the Rose Bowl, throw your kid in the drink? And we just had a big party by the pool and no one had any idea what was going on. Spencer was reportedly sent a platinum copy of the Nevermind, the album, and a teddy bear by Geffen Records in 1991. <laughs> teddy bear. Just bringing up bad memories, Geffen Records. That's what you're doing. <laughs> He recreated the, Eldon Spencer recreated the images multiple times over the years and had the word Nevermind tattooed on his chest. Okay, so you were all in for a while. Fuck you, but in a 2016 interview with GQ Australia, he revealed that he'd recently become unhappy about the artwork. It's fucked up, he said. I'm pissed off about it, to be honest. Huh. Here's, this is where I, if I'm on a jury, I'm like, nobody knows the baby's you. You should have talked to your parents about it. Yes. Your parents fucked up. Why don't you throw me in a pool? Sue your parents. <laughs> That's right. You saw that platinum album, Spencer. God. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to give that back? <sighs> this is a sad, one of the saddest things I've read. Oh. I know, but it's funny. Okay. Because uh, everybody on Twitter was super duper funny because I posted it. Eating one hot dog takes 35 minutes off your life, a study, a study to suggest. Well, in that case, I'm actually dead. Yeah. I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost right now mm -hmm. that's doing stuff. I can, yeah, I love hot dogs. I think I've made that very clear throughout the years in my act. And, you know, I remember my mom when my younger sister was in a high chair mm -hmm. cutting up. Raw ones. A raw. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> raw cold hot dogs. And I remember, like, the littler kids in the family just fucking chow, lumping it. Delicious. Yeah, no ketchup, just a plain. We threw it like a dog, just threw it on the high chair. And you go, here you go. But they would just, mm, and they couldn't. Like, sometimes Patrick could eat, like, four. And I'm like, yeah. this can't be good for a baby, right? And then somebody 
Yeah. But my, it's not about worms. You get worms. You might get, well, raw meat. I mean, my mom was a nurse. I trusted all that kind of shit that she did. I'm like, surely she's read about this. We're feeding these babies <laughs> an eight month old in the high chair. Here's a raw hot dog, buddy. How about a beer? <laughs> Researchers released oh. a nutritional index this week aiming to inform guidelines and help Americans act, achieve healthier and more emotional, stable diets. There were hot dog carts, by the way, in Vancouver, Canada, and hot dog places. Lewis, I am a traditionalist. I just want a hot dog, like off of New York or Chicago. I don't want it fancy. Or a Dodger dog. Those were really good in L.A. I hate to say it. Not a Dodger fan, Cardinal yeah. fan. But I went to a lot of Dodgers games when my friend Chuck was nice enough to um, give me one of his season tickets and go with him. And um, I got to say, one of the most alluring I ideas of it was the Dodger dog. Mm -hmm. I'd wait all day. I wouldn't eat all day. Because I'm like, I might have two. Vancouver, Vancouver's is Jack dog. Japa dog. Yeah. That's what Lou loved. And because Japanese, they have crazy Japanese. hot dogs. Japanese hot dogs. Japanese hot dogs, but mm -hmm. they, which means they have lots of things on them. Yeah. Which was fine for something fun, so but good. Lou can't. Lou's just not like a regular. Let's, he wants everything to be like a little upgraded, <laughs> and I want him downgraded. Um, findings included over 5,000 foods in the U.S. diet. Um, we use these, they found 5,000 things that are terrible for you. We find that small targeted food level substitutions can be achieved by compel compelling nutritional benefits and environmental impact reductions. Um, the food studies range from 74 minutes lost to 80 minutes gained per serving. Here's the bad things. What do you all know? Sugary drinks, hot dogs, burgers, and breakfast and sandwich were linked with the most minutes of healthy life lost. Where is fruits, nice dogs, and mixed vegetables? <laughs> Better to eat cereal and cook grains where it starts to with the largest gains. Well, how about that then? How about I eat a hot dog? I take off a half an hour and then I eat a bowl of broccoli. Now I'm even. Right. Right? Right. According to their logic. It's good for math. Oh my God. One 85 gram serving of chicken wings translated to 3.3 minutes of lost life. I think it's worth it sometimes. Owing to sodium and harmful trans fatty acids, while a beef hot dog on a bun. Result in some 36 minutes. What if I had a um, turkey hot dog? Those are fine. Boo. I know, they're not yeah. as good. No. Peanut butter and jelly? 33 minutes off your life. So then I would blame my mother. That's what was packed every day. Yeah. I didn't choose it. Delicious. Vicky did the assembly line. Mm -hmm. We got what we got. Well, you can always tell who was rich at lunch. I'm like, oh, look, her dad owns the, gra they, the, the grocery store. They have pomegranates. I've never even seen one. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and ham with lettuce. <laughs> we, yeah, lettuce. You yeah. got lettuce in your bread? <laughs> and fancy bread. Yeah. We had white bread, peanut butter and jelly, and a bag of some sort of chips out of those variety giant things. <laughs> yeah. Mm, foods like salted peanuts, baked salmon, and rice and beans were also started, associated with gains. Well, I like salmon. I'll eat a hot dog and then some salmon. Maybe I'll eat a hot dog for lunch and salmon. But then, this is why you know you don't have to listen to these things. <laughs> I mean, I do love science. Or as the anti-vaxxer put on Twitter, Ciense. She, she didn't know how to spell science. Do you uh, think Lewis ever had a Funyun? Do I think Lewis has ever had a Funyun? Yes, because sometimes on the bus, other people bring those things on being me. And then, <laughs> And then I make him taste him, and he always just goes, and he makes this weird face, and he thinks about it. And then he just goes, I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> Sometimes you're hungry, Lou, and a Funyun. A Funyun's not a regular. A Funyun's a, you know, get off the beaten path. Right. This is why you know you don't need to listen to this article, though, people. Okay. When you think of Betty White, the actress, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible for a smile not to cross your face. Few women in Hollywood have enjoyed a career. Spans over seven dec decades while constantly charming the pants off households across America. Her roles are iconic. We all know that. This month, <coughs> she celebrates her 99th birthday. Nice. Here's some quotes from Betty White. Okay. Um, enjoy life. Accentuate the positive, not the negative. It sounds trite, but a lot of people will pick something out to complain about rather than saying, hey, that was great. It's not hard to find great stuff if you look. Her other piece of advice, eat hot dogs and drink vodka. Probably in that order. Boom. Good girl. She's 99. Nice. She don't seem like a vodka person. Nope. No, right? 
Um, she feels, seems like a sangria lady. Um, then she gave a couple other people. Um, here's how you're going to find meaning in later life. Pay attention, paddles. I am. You'll live to be a thousand. Okay. Keep busy. Don't focus everything on you. That wears out pretty fast. It's not hard to find the things you're interested in, but enjoy them and indulge them, and I think that can keep you on your toes. Make yourself useful. Keep your mind sharp. You know how she does it? How do all old people say they do it? Crossword puzzles. I know. I love crossword puzzles. I, I'm old like that. I'm the lady that will have an actual... Um, I like the LA Times better than the New York Times. The New York, the New York Times one, I didn't even know that it started out easier on Monday and got harder as the week goes on. My mom told me that. Like, my parents are so much, their basic education is so much better than mine. Like, my mom can finish Mondays in like 15 minutes. Everything. She's brilliant. She's very smart. And I'm like, I got Tuesdays. Took me four hours. <laughs> I'm missing like seven words. Can you help? Bob. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is um, this little something for you auctioneer people. Who loves an auction? Me? No, paddles. you don't care about an auction. <laughs> no, I don't care. Ah, you know people that like collectible stuff. I don't really care. I don't care about all that, but I think that this is kind of cool. Yeah. Items belonging to gangsta. Gangsta. Al Capone are being auctioned off in Sacramento. Some possessions of notorious gangster Al Capone are being sold at auction later this year in Sacramento. Now, see, you probably don't need the same money you'd need at the Sotheby's auction for the, um, I forgot my plate with my lighter. I just saw it. I'm like, shit. I have to. I, 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 I did feel sad for a second. Um, you know, you could probably afford something. This is not like an art auction. Sonny Capone, the only child of the infamous Prohibition era gangster Al Capone, had reportedly been living in the Auburn area in relative obscurity. His daughters are now selling his estate, including Al Capone's Colt pistol that Al dubs Sweetheart, his diamond monogrammed watch, diamond-studded jewelry bedroom, and then bedroom furniture from his Palm Island home, family photos, a home movie of Capone and his associates, a prison letter sent to Sonny, according to his statement, Monday from Witherell's luxury asset auctioneers and appraisers. Oh, it's a luxury. I don't know. Maybe it's not affordable. These items have been in the family since the 1920s, and if and anything happened to us, nobody would know the stories that go with these items, said Capone's living granddaughter, Diane Capone. Diane is worried that the piece of history would go up in flame. This is the second summer we've had to, our suitcases packed in case we were going to be evacuated, and we knew there was no way we could save these things that belonged to our grandparents. She's trying to preserve history. And is all, she's also determined to set the record straight on who she remembers as Papa, uh, now putting his letter from Alcatraz for his son up for sale. If you think you know Al Capone, once you've read the letter, it will change your notion of him. Just a loving father to a loving son. Over and over again, he refers to my dad as son of my heart. Oh. How traumatic. Mm -hmm. Son of my heart. So Italian. And that's not the language of the words of a man who is hard-hearted, Diane Capone said. Those are the words of a man who's a very devoted father, and there is a part of this story that we wanted to tell. That's nice. Mm -hmm. The auction takes place October 8th. If you're up by the Sutter Club in downtown <laughs> Sacramento. See you there. Yeah. He was convicted of tax evasion in Chicago and transferred to Alcatraz. I've been to Alcatraz like every time I go to San Francisco. I can never not go to I just love it. I love the history. Yeah. And there was a warden there named Madigan. I believe his first name was John, too, which is my dad, my grandpa's, everybody's name. Yeah, he looks like my grandpa. Wow. Though there's a familiarity. I mean, he don't, yeah, he was a war, and he was apparently a really nice warden. Is he in your family tree? No, because we don't know any Madigans that went west. Mm -hmm. We only know the ones in Ireland and then the ones that came here, and St. Louis is as far west as we know. So I don't, I'm sure it's That's the same clan. I mean, eventually, yes, that man has to be related to me somehow, but I don't know. But it was weird to see John, John Mad I think it was John. Or some name in our family. There's only five names the guys use. But it was just to see Madigan, you're like, ooh, wow, he's the one. And the, but then I looked him up. They said he was one of the nicest ones ever. The nicest warden ever. Yeah. Let me taste my chilled watermelon drink. Watermelon rosé. You know what? It's nice. It was 100 degrees in Europe. It's 100 degrees. And if it's a hot summer, it's a, for a hot summer day, it's refreshing. It's got a, and not too much watermelon um, driving you crazy. Go find another flavor. Yeah, I want to try another flavor. 
Okay. I don't really do. I think most of the termites that are involved in this podcast know everything going on. Really, pretty informed about COVID and stuff. But this one, <laughs> this is when the South hold, my, hold our beer, Mississippi. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Mississippi officials warn against UV, using livestock ivermectin to prevent COVID after rise in poison control calls. What? Here's, oh my God. I have two articles on this. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to read them all. What? I know because I, I, I got deep into this, but here's what still no one will say okay. in every article I read, which was like six. Where did this rumor first start? I'm going to guess the facial book. Q. Q. That's a good guess. Mm -hmm. A Klan rally? Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mississippi Poison Control is reporting. <laughs> and, and you a know, convention? and I love Biloxi. I don't want everybody in Biloxi to get sick and die. Come on. How am I supposed to get down there to Mary Mahoney's and get crab claws? <laughs> I love that place. It's my favorite, one of my, probably my favorite so, re restaurant in the whole world. So good. Mississippi's Poison Control is reporting an alarming uptick in calls from people who took a drug bought at a feed store meant to deworm livestock. Now, when you have cancer, do you go to the feed store no. for chemo? No, because wow. they don't have things for humans at the feed store. When you feel sick and you get a hankering to go to the feed store, don't. Just don't. Done. Some believe it will help with COVID-19, but veterinarian experts warn if you buy it at a feed store, it could possibly leave you paralyzed. What? Yeah. Every day, every day, people, phone calls, phone calls coming in. Raina Boudreaux at Double M Feed and Pet Supplies described. She said it started a month ago. Oh, my God. It's been flying off the shelves, and as of right now, it's very hard for us to even get. She oh put out God. 10 tubes of ivermectin paste for livestock this morning. I'm completely out right now. That's a few hours before closing. I, I don't... Uh, she said a woman even came in from Mississippi to get some for a farm because it's hard to get... Your hands on it right now, even for the vendors. They put out a warning. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tractor Supply, which I love Tractor Supply. So great. It's, they have the greatest, um, it's the greatest flashlight ever uh, that I have from Tractor Supply. Um, I give it out as wedding gifts. Tractor Supply is starting to display, <laughs> and it's funny until you have it, and then you go, I don't know how I live without it. It's also so heavy, I could beat a rodent. Like if, if a right. raccoon jumped at me, mm -hmm. boom, boom. No problem. Just startle it. The tractor supply is starting to, to put signs in the store. Tractor supply is having to put... When you use a product that's highly concentrated that is designed in oral form for a horse or cattle, it is easy to overdose, Dr. Mike Strain of the Department of Agriculture and Forestry said. It gained popularity over social media as a... Co okay, which, which social media? Yeah. Right, it's the facial book. Yeah. Once again, Mark Zuckerberg, not okay. responsible. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, it's just a bulletin board. I can't help it if, you know, the morons want to share fake shit. Um, the FDA has not approved it for that person, and it explicitly tells, for that purpose, and explicitly tells people not to take it for COVID. Wow. Merrick, the drug manufacturer, says the current data does not show it is safe or effective to use for anything other than what it's been approved for. It's, it, it's approved for use for parasites, lice, and some skin conditions in humans, as well as a, a deworming in animals. Okay, if you have COVID, that doesn't mean you have lice. No. I can't. Who can have these conversations? <laughs> I'd let them take it. Go ahead. Except then that's another hospital bed that's taken for somebody who might have just had a regular heart attack. Yeah. Um, in higher doses that will cross, in high enough doses that will cross the blood-brain barrier and what it does, it can basically result in paralysis. There, the, it, <laughs> then it is very difficult to treat, I bet. Um, wow. I, Mississippi, stop it. Come on, I want to come back there. I, there would be no reason to come if you're all paralyzed and sitting at home or dead. Um, wow. Yeah. So that, and then, as if that wasn't enough, Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Oh, no. Oh, right. no. <laughs> My mayor, once again, the Lake made the news this summer for being, and last summer, for being completely out of control. Super spreader. Super, so everything was a super spreader. 
And it's a huge lake, and we were just super spreading everywhere you could spread. Everybody was really into super spreading. And then, you know, my mom and dad are running around, and I don't want them running around, but uh, the mayor of Lake Ozark, <laughs> Dennis Newbury. I don't normally read you guys Lake Ozark things, or sometimes I, I spend time at a lake in Tennessee. I don't read those things because they're not national, and I think no one will give a shit. But this one went national. Um, I think it went international. Because of what he, he posted this on the facial book. Oh, God. <laughs> Dennis Newbury posted this. He's the mayor of Lake Ozark, Missouri. A dear friend of mine, Dennis Miser, is at a central Missouri hospital with COVID. Dennis is the owner of Mohick Barbecue in Cuba, Missouri. Now, I've been to Cuba, Missouri. I'm going to have to stop by this bar. Well, no, there's probably okay. COVID everywhere. I've known him for over 30 years. He keeps a boat at a marina here in Lake Ozark as a Hail Mary pass, but he spelled it Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, like Christmas. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have, wow. I have procured, which means stole, <laughs> right. in hillbilly talk. I procured some, some, <laughs> some moonshine oh, wow. out of my brother's closet. <laughs> As a Hail Mary pass, I've procured some ivermectin for him and we will be driving it to him today. He's in the hospital. Oh, this God. friend, please pray for cooperation from his caregivers and hospital administrations to allow his loved ones and friends to step in and assist with his life. If we do nothing, his life will surely be taken from his 18-year-old son, his family, and friends. I need your prayers and commitments to be comments to attempt to gain favor with the powers that be. Oh, my God. Uh, First of all, our, uh, our mayor is not a doctor. Nope. Our mayor is a realtor. He was going to drive poison to the hospital, because I guess if you're going to poison a friend, you want him to be in the hospital. That's the best place to be when the paralysis starts kicking in. Oh um, so I saw this posted on Twitter. Somebody posted it. <laughs> and I saw it yesterday, and I thought, I'm not going to say anything about that, because I actually thought this could be a parody, oh. a joke. Wow. I really thought, I don't want to repost it if this dude didn't really do it, so I'll check tomorrow. So I went on the facial book, mm -hmm. and he had taken down the post. Oh. Yeah. You can't, because everybody's like, this guy's got to resign, right? Yeah. Right. He's, he's sneaking poison in. And I love how he thinks he's getting in the COVID ward. You, have you never, have you not heard any of the news? People die alone in COVID. You don't get to go in and visit your loved ones with COVID. He don't believe in the news. Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel very sorry for anyone working at the Central Missouri Hospital that he speaks of. If you see this man, he's white. He has brown hair and he looks to be about, I don't know, 35 to 40. Get him. Check his pockies. <laughs> Where's your ivermectin? I know you have it. <laughs> Fucking hate. Oh this is where God. you just go, people, what are we thinking? That's, that's crazy. Yep, that's how we make the national news. Here's some great national news. Not like my moronic. That's the mayor. <laughs> Just got to say that again. The mayor. Mm -hmm. Here's some great news. Taco Bell revives breakfast. Yes! And hires little Nas X <gasps> as chief, yeah! chief impact officer. Fantastic. You know, some fancy company out, out there in California hired Prince Harry <laughs> to be chief impact officer. He'll have no impact. No. Right. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't do anything. No. You know who's going to have impact? Little Nas. Yeah. This is a great choice. Great idea. I would have loved to have done it, but I know I'm not. I'm not for the for the children. <laughs> Little Nas is for the children. The children like After it. sneakily removing breakfast items, it wasn't a sneak. I noticed it. <laughs> I noticed it. All of it. Oh. Over the course of the past several months, Taco Bell is bringing back the best meal of the day. Better yet, the fast food taco chain is launching a massive breakfast campaign with former Taco Bell employee. Oh, he used to work there. Former Taco Bell employee, Little Nas, Great. as its newest spokesperson. Good for him. He went a little too far with the um, Satan shoes, but I, I'm good with that. I got beyond that. You know, everybody makes a mistake. He apologized. So what? I have devil shoes. Right. I met. It was a joke. It didn't go well. Um, <laughs> Monday morning, the restaurant announced that Grammy award-winning musician is now Taco Bell's chief impact officer, a role that allows him to collaborate on the breakfast, on the brand experience from inside out. In layman's term, Little Nas is now the face 
of Taco Bell for its breakfast chain, and then they go on and talk about them. And then here's what's coming back. Okay. okay? Revamped. Cheesy toasted breakfast burritos. Never had one. Nope. I just like the tacos. Hash brown toasted breakfast burritos. That sounds good. Grande toast breakfast burritos. I don't want toast in a breakfast burrito. Anyway, um, they're all, it's all going to be back. And 90% of the location nationwide should have this available by mid-September. So if you're on your way to work and you're thinking maybe I'm going to grab something, there you go. Okay. This we'll is have to go taste it. Yeah, we'll do a taste. Yeah. And I'll put it up on the, um, the Instagram. This is so, this has to be a show note picture so people can really get the gist of this. Okay. Um, this is in Australia. Helenia Ality, mm -hmm. a lady, was browsing the spice aisle <laughs> of an Australian supermarket when she came face to face with a huge snake. <gasps> yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. The head of the 10 foot long non-venomous diamond python Wow. emerged through a space in the shelf above the spicy jars in the Sydney store. Sydney! It's not like they're out in Perth or somewhere remote where you're like, yeah, well, I could see how a Python. It's, it's fucking Sydney. That's like saying Los Angeles. It's a like oh, big city. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, and where did it hide? And how did it get to the aisle? How, the, the things are unpacked. How is it? Because wow. in the picture, you can see it looks like a normal, regular American grocery store. If you're thinking, is it weird? Is it stuff in boxes? No. They're placed out on the shelf. Listen to this shit, though. And you would think I didn't initially see it because it was curled up way in the back behind little jars of spices. I kind of turned to my right, and it poked its head out. Uh, Helenia, who's coincidentally a trained snake catcher? What? Do what? <laughs> <laughs> Do what now? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Said the snake's head had came within eight inches of her own. You oh know, I know a python doesn't isn't poisonous. I know they squeeze you to death, but they can bite. Yeah, I yeah. don't care. I, I don't want to see its open its mouth. I don't want to see it at all. No. But she said, "How crazy is this?" Thankfully, I have a background in snakes, so I was pretty calm about it. It definitely shocked me a little because I, I wasn't that expecting that it. Snake. Supermarket chain Woolworths confirmed in a statement that a slippery and rare customer was spotted. Oh, they try to make it funny and gentle. A slippery and rare customer was spotted in the spice aisle on Monday at its stores in the suburb of Glenory on Sydney's now northwest outskirts. Oh, my God. Once it was sighted, our team members reacted quickly and calmly to cordon off the area for the safety of customers. Uh, <laughs> Helena said she used her phone uh, to video the snake, which we'll put the video. Mm -hmm. You see, see it just coming out. As it extended its body from the shelf into the aisle before reporting the intruder to the supermarket staff. So she's down there filming it. She retrieved a snake catching bag she had from her nearby home and caught the snake. Who doesn't? I mean, look, <laughs> this lady should get free groceries for, for a long time, at yeah. least a month. A month? I'm, yeah, well, it's a well, because they would have had to evacuate the store. They would have had to call a snake catcher. You're just really, for really life. lucky. She should get for life. For life? I don't know. That's for a little life. too much reward. Oh, mm. Really? I'm going to ask you to get a python. Well, Come on. they just lucked out. She caught the snake, which she then had um, retreated back, which had then by re retreated back into the shelf. So she had to go get it. Then she released it to the nearby woodlands. It's unclear how the snake entered the supermarket. Well, that's a problem. That's yeah. a problem, Woolworths. And isn't it weird they have Woolworths there? I only think of those as a kid. Well, they have in the UK. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. they're, they're, when I see one in, a da like, I think downtown San Antonio still has a... The signs there, yeah. like the old timey sign. Uh, and now it's a diner. <laughs> she was trained to catch ve venomous, sna uh, venomous snakes when she was a volunteer working for a Sydney wildlife rescue organization several years ago. Suspected the snake was look was a male looking for a mate. I knew straight away it was non venomous. It was a non aggressive, and it wasn't going to be a problem for anyone except Kathleen, who had a heart <laughs> attack when she saw yeah, it. If anything, I think everyone was a little bit excited. We were all in lockdown, so it was kind of the most excitement we've had for a while. What a good attitude that lady has. And that store really should make a big deal. Her picture should be in the front. I would, I'd ask for a lot of shit if I was her. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> Listen, the odds of me being here and you not having to deal with this, Good for you. Very good for you. All right. <laughs>
All right. I don't, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you guys this. <laughs> In case you feel the need to just be dumb for a minute and look at something that you just go, what? <laughs> Tom Hanks, the actor, for those of you who haven't kept up, has a son named Chet. No. Now, Tom has a son named Colin that I've seen in a lot of my shows on Netflix and all that, and he's a wonderful actor, and, and he's, uh, he's cute, mm -hmm. but more, more than cute, he's a really good actor. It seems like a very, you know, Normal person. regular. <laughs> Chet, however, um, first, he makes a lot of videos on Instagram. Mm -hmm. We will, Paddles will put in the show notes so you don't have to hunt them down. I'm not saying this is does anything good for your psyche or your intellectual well-being. No. But it, it's hard to believe this is Tom Hanks. His kid, he has five. I looked it up. Does he really? Yes. Wow. And four or five. I, I want to say five. A lot. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Well, this lady, Colin is his half-brother. This, Chet Hanks's mom is Rita Wilson. <laughs> but every time I mm -hmm. see a video of Chet, because he's, he's all over the map. Mm -hmm. Like, he's an anti-vaxxer, but then he'd say bad things about Trump. Like, none of it is even a cohesive thread, right? right? And then sometimes he talks, like, with a rapper accent, and he's, like, super white. But he... <laughs> um, and then sometimes, sometimes he doesn't have it at all. He's confused. He's very confusing. <laughs> but I think he does it... He's a rapper. That's his thing. Oh. Yeah. Good for um, him. But here's where I just go, what? Chet Hanks, whose rap name is Chet Hanks, but he just changed it to a K, I mean to a X, instead of a KX, KS. So he took Hanks, uh -huh. he kept, the whole idea of a That's rap name is said. it's not your, your name. Right, yeah. like I would be Smalls with a Z. I already know my rap name. <laughs> I'm Smalls with a Z. I'm Come on, you that. <laughs> I like it, but you know, it, um, <laughs> he said uh, this video was viewed over four. Every time he posts a video, all I think is, I wonder if he gets to go to Thanksgiving. Oh. I wonder if there's gonna come a point where yeah. the mom and dad, um, his name is Chester Marlin Hanks, born Marlin. in 1990. He's an American actor. He is an actor. He's been in stuff. Um, he's, he's had recurring roles in Empire and Shameless, so got to give him credit there. He's appeared in Showtime Legal Drama miniseries, Your Honor. He has a viral song called White Boy Summer, and I watch, I don't know what that meant. I don't. <laughs> I was like, oh my, I don't, know, I don't know what White Boy Summer, but he's really determined to have one. We'll he is show. having a white boy. He's the third child of Tom Hanks, wow. and the first child born to Hanks and re actress Rita Wilson. He, he went to Northwestern. He's yeah. not dumb. Right. Wow. It's like he's purposely <laughs> trying to act like he's not educated. He's going out of his way to act like he doesn't have any information. Wow. His older half brother's Colin Hanks. Oh, he was in Dexter. That's where I know Colin from. I love that show. Um, he, oh, for a while, he was Chet Hayes. Hey, baby. What? Wow, that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. And then he had a musical. Um, he has a daughter. He does. Um, oh, wow. He had it. So here's where he's confusing. He had an Instagram in support of Black Lives Matter. He announced in social media hiatus after citing pro-Trump conspiracy theorists targeting his family. Q believers had falsely accused his father of being a pedophile oh, yeah, and satan that. satanic. Yeah, I remember when they said Tom, Tom Hanks was a Satanist. I'm like, you didn't even come close to hitting the nail on that head. I mean, there's some no. people that I go, maybe, you know. He's not Tom Hanks. Come on now. <laughs> Um, he, was in he posted a video later insulting Donald Trump. Um, uh, so he's just, he describes himself as the black sheep of the family. Probably. And he was wanted by the British police in 2015 after damaging a hotel room, incurring $1,800 worth of damages. He ended rehab for cocaine that year. Um, he might be mentally ill. He, uh, there's a lot going on there. Um, but I just laugh because I try to picture if my brother was doing this, what would my dad do? <laughs> oh, wow. 
And then I, I don't know what goes on in families, but it's just, it's amusing from a distance. He caused a lot of rumble this week with his anti-COVID thing. This is what he said. It's the motherfucking flu. Get over it. And then it went on. I watched the video. It went on. For, it got viewed 400,000 times. And he just says, if you're in danger, stay inside. Stay inside. I'm tired of wearing a motherfucking mask. He doubled down Wednesday in another video. Just like me, you have the right to be mad. I have the right not to get that shit. He said, calling the vaccine an experimental government injection. My immune system said it's good. It doesn't need to be tampered with. This is my favorite line. There's more evidence for UFOs being real, for the vaccine being healthy for you. Really? Huh. That's funny, because I read a lot of UFO things. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not sure that I would agree with that. And I don't think I would call my doctor friends and say, do you guys agree with this? I don't think they would. Maybe he learned that at Northwestern. Well, <laughs> maybe he didn't pay attention. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this one, because it's super cool. Good. But it, you know how I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with... Um, art, like expensive art. I'll never own it and stuff, but I really love Basque. And if you've never seen yeah. that movie, it was so good. Um, I can't even say I love the art. I just liked his story. I mean, you know, you don't root for someone to be a heroin addict, but uh, anyway, he was an interesting person. Hopefully not. It's a good movie. Um, so, this is crazy. Beyonce, and I don't do I don't usually do celebrity shit because I'm usually, I don't care. But this is more about the painting. Okay. Beyonce and Jay-Z star in, in Tiffany and Company, in a Tiffany and Company, so Tiffany, Tiffany mm -hmm. the jeweler, campaign featuring never before seen Basque painting. What? What? Wow. A new campaign from Tiffany and Company marks a number of firsts, including the inaugural instance of Beyonce and Jay-Z appearing alongside one another for, to create, for a creative endeavor of this variety. That campaign in question, boasting photos by Mason Poole, also stands as the first time that Tiffany Diamond has been featured in a campaign. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Wow. But it's the presence of the never before seen Basque piece, uh, as Miles Soka reported early Monday, that's steering the chatter. We don't have any literature that he said that, that says he made the painting for Tiffany. Alexandra Arnaud, those are the super rich Frenchies, the executive VP of products and communi communications at Tiffany, set of the late artists. It, the painting is called Equal Pie, like science, like E equals MC. Um, but we know a little bit about Basque. This guy's trying to, the colors of this painting are the Tiffany colors. Wow. He's trying to say that it was a secret shout out way back then. Uh. No, dude, no. <laughs> We know, we, but we know a little no. bit about Basque. We know his family. We did an exhibition of his work at the Louis Vuitton Foundation a few years back. We know that he loved New York and he loved luxury and he loved jewelry. My guess is that the blue painting is not by chance. Oh, I think so. Yeah. The color is so specific that it has to be some kind of homage. <laughs> but you have to say it like that. It's an homage. <laughs> The About Love campaign is complemented by a video element complete with the take on Moon River and some Jay captured Super 8 footage for a film element likened to a music video. The two enlisted so-and-so and so-and-so. The print campaign will launch the partnership that is a commitment for $2 million towards scholarships. Um, but here's, what, here's why. I'm like, how have we never seen this painting? Right. What happened? I'm going to tell you. That's right. Here's the little known history. Robin's egg blue. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And that's Tiffany too, but it's definitely what do you own the color? I mean, come on now. There's no. plenty of paintings that have this color. It doesn't mean it was meant for you secretly on a, on a down low <laughs> shout out. The, 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 the arrogance to yeah. think that. Go, you rock on narcissist. Um, <laughs> The, the painting, though, however, is going to go on display at Tiffany's Fifth Avenue flagship store in New York. So the next time I go to New York, I'll be definitely going. If it's there, I'll have to call. Can you imagine calling Tiffany's? Do you guys have that painting up? <laughs> the one with Jay-Z and Beyonce? Can I see the diamond? <laughs> um, it incorporated a Basque uh, the campaign. Um, incorporated a Basque painting that it recently acquired for sources say well into the eight figures. So they're not going to say what they paid. Uh, I don't care about the campaign. 
Um, what's the story behind the painting? The canvas dates from what is widely regarded as Basque's most coveted year and contains a number of his characteristic motifs, including the crown and skull. It's a wash and light blue hue made famous by Tiffany, although there's no evidence that the artist created the work with the brand in mind. Yeah, maybe blue was on sale. Right. Maybe he went to Aaron Brothers mm -hmm. and they had a whole tub of blue and went 40% yep. off. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Brothers. Alexander Arnaud, Tiffany, ex Tiffany Executive Vice President, said the color's so specific. Oh, I already know. It's supposed to be so. Um, hold on. It's going to be on display. We know that. I'm going to tell you, though. Uh, uh, they said it was sold for somewhere between 15 and 20 million. Um, Although it was reported the painting had never been seen before, it is an entire, entirely unknown to the art world or the market. According to the Arnett Price database, the painting was offered at Sotheby's London in June 1990, just two years after he died at age 27, and it was offered for $250,000. Wow. And nobody bought it. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. Anyone considering making the purchase at the time who is familiar with best ways, uh, Basque is likely kicking themselves over that one. Six years later, the blue canvas came to auction again, also at the Sotheby's London, this time with a lower estimate. It sold for uh, 253000 Holy shit. Yep. It didn't take long for Twitter sleuths, this is why I like Twitter, <laughs> to track down the work's most, re most recent previous owner, the Sabadini family, a Milan-based clan, clan, clan behind the jewelry house. I don't know that jewelry. I don't know fancy things like that. <laughs> a 2018 feature in W Magazine shows mother and daughter Stefani and Micola Sabadini posing in front of the painting, which hangs above their sofa. What? I know rich people can buy art and hoard it, but I just think it's wrong. It's not very nice. It's not very nice. No. Like, the whole world should get to see it. Like, you know, be <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld used to have a, th a joke about... Um, he went to the um, Smithsonian, the science part, and there was a toothbrush in a thing, and it said, on loan from Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even remember the joke. I remember the gist of the joke was Jerry just going, Neil, give him the toothbrush. Right. Okay? <laughs> what, do you need it back? Are you going to need loan. it back? But, I mean, like, you could loan it. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like over-the-top hoarding. Talk about hoarding. <laughs> um, That's crazy. His record auction was 110 million. He sold a one has been in the spring of 2017. So, um, wait, there's one other thing on here. Um, here's the other thing. Also grabbing attention is the fact that Beyonce is wearing the famous 12.85 carat Tiffany yellow diamond necklace in the photograph when Aubrey Hepburn sported the famous diamond in the promotional images for breakfast at Tiffany's. The same gem was set in a necklace called the ribbon rosette. It was reset in 2012 with an additional 100 plus carats of diamonds. Beyonce is reportedly only the fourth person ever to wear it. Really? Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Termites. Go look at it. In the, show. the show notes. Yeah, you're going to see it in the show notes. I can't believe there's nothing else on this painting that implies Tiffany. No. You don't own a collar. Tiffany wants a head. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give you, I don't ever give you guys previews, but I'm gonna do it. Cause I'm nice. not, yeah, well, cause I'm fascinated. My brother's always, and I'm gonna do the men too. But I was reading the story about the richest lady in the world. Uh -huh. In the world. Yes. And I don't ever even, I wouldn't even know what to kind of do, to do with this money. I'm just fascinated that these people exist. Remember we talked about that lady that was a roofer well, yeah. she's not a roofer. No. <laughs> used to be a comedian. She owns there was the a comedian Dan O'Sullivan from St. Louis. It was funny. And he's like, uh, I remember, uh, you know, I was a roofer for a while. And I remember uh, another guy, uh, they always said that roofers have the highest rate of alcoholism. And I remember another roofer saying to me, uh, hey, man, do you think it's dangerous on this roof? And I went, roof? <laughs> he's so drunk, he didn't even know he's on the roof. Um, I'm gonna run down. There are 20, let's make sure I'm right. Forbes is 25 richest women in the world. 
and what they did to get, well, what they kind of, I can't go too deep, it's too hard, but uh, what they did to get it. Nice. But the, the richest one, because I don't know a lot about this lady, I'm just fascinated. Uh, her name is Francois Betancourt Myers. And she's pretty. I don't understand why she's wearing Harry Carey glasses, but, you know, she's French. Be weird. Um, uh, she's the richest. And her, she's the richest. And you'll think of her now every time you go into a drugstore because you know what her family did? They met think, think Frenchy. Mm -hmm. Think a drugstore. What product? Face cream. You're close, but what's the family name? Ole. No, but good guess. Ole, ole. It is not ole, ole. <laughs> it is L'Oreal. Oh. Right, wow. and I still buy their mascara. And then when you read about the lady, I'm happy I do. Nice. It's a happy story. But I'll read you the other ones, because some of them you're like, do what? You <laughs> fucking made all that money? Huh. Do what? And they do dumb it down. Oprah Winfrey, 2.7 billion. Source, TV shows. I don't even write. Good enough. <laughs> so we'll do that next week, termites. <laughs> oh my god. Look, I made an atom. All right. Oh my god, wow. It's time. It's time, termites. <laughs> no, I was um, you know. I made just, an atom. Just, you know, do you know what an atom looks like? Kinda like what I just made, but now it fell apart. Okay. Yeah, I could draw one. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they are. I went to go look for the blue moon and pfft, I didn't see it. You didn't see the moon. <laughs> I don't know which way I was supposed to be looking, but I couldn't find it. All right, termites. <sighs> Behave yourselves, stay safe, and until the next episode, 